now I want to feel the muscles of your face, okay? If you, if you can clench your jaw for me, and again, clench your jaw for me. Perfect. Okay. If you can let your jaw drop a little bit, mm -hmm. perfect. And just a little bit down, just open. Uh -huh. Don't let me push it up. Don't let me close it. Perfect. And what we're going to test next is the jaw jerk reflex. We're going to check the reflex of your chin. Okay, I'm, gonna put my, I'm not going to hit your chin directly, <laughs> so fear not. Uh, I'm going to put my finger on your chin. If you can just like drop it a little bit, just let it go floppy. Perfect. And over-exaggerated um, chin reflex could suggest a pathology, so that is what we're trying to observe. The last part of our trigeminal examination is to move the jaw from side to the side. So if you can move it against my hands, perfect. Again, move it against my hands, excellent. So this concludes our trigeminal nerve examination. And the next cranial nerve we're going to examine is cranial nerve number seven, which is the facial nerve. So what we're going to do now is check your facial expressions. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So if you can raise your eyebrows, and don't let me pull them down. Perfect. If you could puff out your cheeks like this, don't let me push it in. If you can purse your lips like this, don't let me pull them apart. Perfect. If you can close your eyes very tightly like this, don't let me pull them up. Excellent. And finally, if you can show me your teeth. Mm -hmm. Open, open up, okay, perfect. Okay, we're not looking at your teeth here, we're checking for symmetry and if there's any deviation, okay? okay? And the facial nerve also has a sensory component, so you need to ask the patient if, have you noticed any changes in your sense of uh, taste recently? Definitely not. Okay, perfect. Next, we move on to cranial nerve number eight, the vestibular cochlear nerve. Now, with this nerve, what we're going to assess is your hearing. Have you noticed any changes in your hearing recently? I uh, have some tini tinnitus in my, this, this left ear. Okay. So that is one thing that we comment on at the end of our examination. The patient has tinnitus in the left ear. That is a positive finding. And is one ear better than the other? Uh, this one seems to be better than the left The one ear. that has tinnitus. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to and perform three examinations of the ears. One, I'm going to whisper something into your ear and cover the other one, and I'll ask you uh, what number I've just whispered, okay? okay. And then you'll tell me which one. Okay. Hopefully, right? <laughs> and then we'll perform a Rene test and a Weber's test. These are the tests that we perform with a tuning fork, okay? okay. For uh, conduction and um, if you have more air conduction or uh, bone conduction and also if there's any difference between the left and the right ear. Okay. Okay, does that mm -hmm. sound good? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll just go behind you. Mm -hmm. First, ideally at 15 centimeters from the patient's ears, covering the other ear, I'll whisper 15. 15. And then a little bit more distance, 25. 25. Perfect. And now I'll cover this ear and test the right one. 32. 32. 77. 77. Excellent. Both ears have um, a pair of the normal ear. And we're going to move on to the Rene test. At an OSCE station, we're going to have two different tuning forks 128 and then the 512. The shorter one and the long, longer one. For the Rene test and the Weber's test, this is the one that we should pick. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna place this tuning fork here behind your ear, okay. and then to the side of your ear. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask you which one you hear louder, okay. on the bone or to the side. Okay. And then we're gonna repeat this with the other ear, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. All right. <clears throat> what we need to make sure is 
that if one of the ears is problematic, as the patient has suggested, the left ear, we start with the ear that hears better than the other one. So we start with the ear that's not problematic. Do you hear this? No. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which one do you hear louder? Uh -huh. On the bone or next to the ear? Or next to the ear. Next to the, next the ear. ear. Yes. Okay. Again. Next to the ear. Next to the ear. Mm -hmm. Now, if the patient hears next to the ear better than better than the bone, then we say this is a positive Rene test. And then we'll go ahead and perform the Weber's test. Again, I'll flick this and put it on your forehead okay. and ask you which ear hears it louder, the right or the left okay. or equal. Okay? Mm -hmm. Either of them are not here. Can you try again? Sure. Well, it's about equal. It's about equal. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is the answer that we expect. If one ear hears it better than the other, then we may have a conduction problem. Okay, so um, this concludes the vestibular cochlear um, nerve examination, which is cranial nerve number eight. For cranial nerves number 9 and 10, glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves, even though they have separate functions, they tend to work together, therefore they're examined together. One of the things that we assess is um, the gag reflex. In an OSCE station, you're not expected to test the gag reflex, but you need to mention that you would perform a gag reflex examination. And this is done by using an orange stick. Okay. Now, let me get this ready for you. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to ask you to take, to take a sip of water, mm -hmm. hold it in your mouth for a little bit, and then swallow it when you're ready. Okay? Mm -hmm. We want to check your swallow reflex. We see normal symmetrical movements. Excellent. Thank you very much. And then if you can cough for me. <coughs> Again? <coughs> okay. So we want to make sure that there is no bovine cough and the cough sounds normal. And one of the important things when assessing cranial nerves number 9 and 10 is to assess what's going on inside the mouth. If you can say ah for me. Ah. Uh, ah. Okay. Just depress your tongue a little bit. Okay, you want to observe the tongue being depressed and the uvula being midline and the soft fat palate being elevated. Say ah again. Ah. Excellent. Perfect. Next, we have cranial nerve number 11. Cranial nerve number 11 is known as the accessory nerve. With this, we test two things. If you can shrug your shoulders for me, and don't let me push them down. Excellent. And if you can move your head against my hands. Just move to the left, perfect. Again, move to the right, against my hands. Perfect. And finally, the last cranial nerve, cranial nerve number 12, is the hypoglossal nerve. The hypoglossal nerve tests the time. Okay, so please open your mouth. Okay, assess the tongue if there is any muscle wasting or any fasciculations. And if you can stick out your tongue, at this point, look for deviation. And if you can wiggle your tongue quickly between left and right, excellent. This normally is sufficient for the hypoglossal nerve examination. However, if you want to make sure, if you're unsure about any part of this examination, you can also ask the patient to push your fingers with the tongue from inside the cheeks. So, perfect. So I just performed a cranial nerve examination on Ian, a 73-year-old male. Even though most of the examination 
was flawless and without any problems. Ian has mentioned that the left ear has a tinnitus problem. Otherwise, all the cranial nerves and the cranial nerve functions appear to be normal. For completion, I would also perform an upper limb neurological examination and a lower limb neurological examination. Thank you.